The development of the seven habits began with a study I completed in 1976. I wanted to study the success idea in America and how it evolved. So I got into the popular success literature going back for 200 years. This included many, many books, magazine articles, annotated bibliographies, summaries, reviews. I literally tapped into thousands and thousands of sources, either directly or indirectly. As I worked, I started to sense a pattern. As soon as I sensed this pattern, I looked for evidence of it, and the evidence was everywhere. The basic finding was this. For the first 150 years, almost the entire focus of the literature was on character, on principles, on what we might call the character ethic. Attributes such as integrity, fidelity, courage, compassion, contribution, responsibility, justice. These findings became the basis for writing the seven habits of highly effective people. And then, because of many, many societal forces, the emphasis gradually shifted. In the early 1900s, particularly in the 20s and the 30s, away from the character ethic to what we might call the personality ethic, which focused more on techniques than on principles. You are probably familiar with many books that illustrate the literature of the personality ethic. They basically deal with how to take care of yourself, how to look good, how to dress in particular ways, how to create the right image. In other words, the personality ethic focuses on how to appear to be rather than on how to actually be. Many of these techniques have real merit. However, if they don't have their roots in the character ethic, if they don't have their roots in principles, they won't have the power to create enduring effectiveness. For example, what if people learn techniques of influencing others, but they're fundamentally duplicitous or deceitful in their character? What if they really wanted to use people to build their own economic success? They might develop smoothness in their relationships so that they can have their own personal ends achieved, money, fame, glory, whatever. They really couldn't care less about contribution or service, purpose, adding value, helping others. How much trust would you have in them? How willing would you be to follow them or to rely upon them when things get tough? You know, one time I had a student come to me and say, how am I doing in your class? I looked him in the eye and said, you really know how you're doing, don't you? A lot better than I do. How are you doing? And he kind of looked down squeamishly. Well, not too good, I guess. I just had kind of a rough time lately, and maybe I haven't applied myself as much as I should have. You really came to find out how well you'd psyched me out, how well you'd psyched out the system, isn't that right? When in fact, you kind of know in your heart how you're doing. Well, how am I doing, he said. How are you doing? Let's focus on what's really happening, not on what's appearing to happen. You see, this whole personality ethic with its technique focus is like the tip of an iceberg. The tip or that part which is seen on the surface by others. It's above the water. The character ethic is like the great mass of the iceberg under the water. People often do no work in the foundation where the great mass is, where the greatest long-term impact is. Too many people give all their energy and focus to the tip of the iceberg. That is to learning techniques that others can see. You see this even in organizations, not just individuals. You see, programs change. Practices change. Principles do not change. If we help individuals and organizations to internalize principles, they will know how to adapt the practices to address specific situations. Let me emphasize that techniques have their place. They're very important. I really mean that. I mean, you want good human relations techniques, 
public relations techniques, communication techniques, management techniques. But when we use techniques to cover our own lack of character, they become manipulative. They undermine trust and confidence. You see, what we really need is the character ethic. And that's essentially what The Seven Habits is about. This material is based on an inside-out approach, meaning we give our first energies to our own character development before we focus on techniques or how to be more effective with others. Gandhi beautifully demonstrated this principle once. A mother came to him and said, Would you help my child reduce the amount of sugar he is eating? Gandhi paused, thought, and answered, Well, talk to me in a week. A week later, the mother asked him again, and he talked to the boy, and the boy agreed. And the mother said, Why didn't you talk with him last week? Gandhi smiled and said, You don't understand. Last week, I too was eating sugar. Unless we work on our character, we will not develop trustworthiness. And trustworthiness is built by the combination of both character and competency. We could have all of the ability in the world, but if we don't have the basic character to be reliable, to take responsibility, others will soon learn to distrust us. They're fearing that we're just trying to meet our own ends, perhaps at their expense. In my opinion, unless we return to the character ethic, we won't have the basic foundation of trustworthiness. That's what leads to trust, which is needed to build effective interpersonal relationships. In the final analysis, what we are communicates far more eloquently than anything we say or do. I love the quote of Henry David Thoreau. For every thousand hacking at the leaves of evil, there is one striking at the root. In other words, let's work primarily on the roots to begin with and build a foundation of trustworthiness. This is one of the key areas of focus in the seven habits, to build character and competence and to restore trustworthiness and trust in our lives, in the lives of our families, our organizations. Trust and trustworthiness really are the basis of personal and interpersonal leadership. It's the foundation of all true effectiveness.